Regional Park SF. Acting Director of Parks and Rec. We are recording this, so if anybody wants to see it out there, we have notes, we'll have recording. Cynthia will work with Cynthia. Um, so we are doing this in hybrid, so people can join us online. Um, for those of you who are in the room, there are handouts on the back. Um, we did send out the, the materials that we're looking over today. We sent out last night. I apologize. It's been a uh, long couple of days, so but we did send it out to you. Um, we're going to go through all of it. We've got an hour and a half today. We're going to spend most of our time. I will go through the follow-up questions from last time, um, but we're going to spend most of the day on Boyd Brown. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit. Um, council has given staff a referral to look at the way the and go back in the fall, which is why this meeting is now um, structured mostly focused on the way the a lot of discussions around that. So um, the four handouts you have is the agenda that we'll go through in a minute. It's a PowerPoint. Um, we will have the, uh, all of the notes and the questions from the last meeting. We provided a handout on that. Uh, we provided a handout on the test version for an online scholarship application, um, as well as an online um, application for grant requests, which will which hopefully make it easier for you to apply. And then um, sort of an instruction overflow of the process that we can use that we're recommending uh, to try and streamline the application process and the reviewing process. So those are the items. Um, we will put them, um, make them available to folks online. Again, we sent most of the materials last night. The one item we did not send um, was the bill chart. We got to stop finish this morning. So um, we will make sure all of that material gets posted. So at this time, I'm gonna to go to the next slide. Um, there we go. So our agenda today, again, to review the qualified item for region meeting one, discuss the council referral regarding rate formal scholarship program. Um, and that includes reviewing the purpose of the programs, who we want to have be eligible for the program, what that's going to look like, um, how we're going to administer it. And then the last item that we'll talk about is give you an opportunity to say what are the things you guys want to talk about in the next week. So in terms of follow-up items, um, um, you have in the document for a long series of questions, here nine pages, um, that are basically in four areas field reservations, use of fees, weight wrong, and relations with outside organizations. So it's this document that looks like this. So um, can you pull that up in that? It's not trying to swim, I'm going to get a so we can see what this is. Okay, so everybody should be able to see the yeah. So everybody online should be able to see a document that says follow up items from community sports group meeting, and everybody in the room has a hard copy. So I'm just going to go ahead and go forward while they work out getting it all the screen in front. So the first question was how many hours are groups using the fields? And we've given you the hours of the number of bookings, the number of hours, the fees, as you recall, bookings were not in place prior to uh, fiscal year 2021. And so there were no fees and no revenue. In 2023, when the cost recovery policy went into place, um, you'll see that our number of bookings actually went up. Um, and while the hours reduced, the number of bookings, so that meant more people were getting a chance to use it. The fee was $14. Which generated about one hundred fourteen thousand dollars, a little over one hundred fourteen thousand dollars uh, in fees for from the use of field use. Is that even a little for people who are nonprofits or no paid users outside of nonprofits? 
um, the question was only related to oh. the nonprofit sports group. So that we did, we had others, okay. um, but this is just the question only related to the nonprofit. Our field reservation allocated and prioritized. Um, as you all remember, we used to have a prioritization process um, that actually went to the base side of the classroom library policy was adopted. And so right now there is not a formal allocation of allocation prioritization process. Staff reviewed the application, does their best to negotiate with the user groups, plug in the times. Um, but we do see this as an area that we really need to have a conversation with you all at a future meeting um, about creating a formal uh, prioritization process so that we can have as many groups available, uh, fields available to as many groups as possible, keeping in mind that the, the idea is that we want to serve Santa Clara community. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, staff is researching best practices um, from other emergencies. And so at the next meeting, as you'll see in a little bit, um, our proposal should bring back on the community to talk about that. Um, I think I should... Quick question. Do you have a time frame as to when that's going to be available? Is it 60 days, 90 days, so 20 days? At the, next, at, the, at the end of the meeting, we're going to schedule the next meeting. The end of this meeting. Okay. Okay. So um, the next question or comment that came back to us was the enforcement of field reservation safety and consequences for non-permitted users. There should be an incentive for groups to comply with the rules. Possible solution to field enforcement bring back our staff um, to assist and report a patrol of non-permitted cards users. Um, so I'm happy to report council current. Yes, and so they did include funding for um, to restore parks patrols in the amount of two hundred thirty thousand um, dollars. So um, that will provide a level of service of eight hours per day with an additional five hours shift on Saturdays. So all city parks will be monitored and they'll be live on the program, um, and they will in fact going to be activity and laws to the impact of the success of that program. So again, um, that's was funded as a July one. So they're still ramping up in that program, but. We hope that that will get up to alleviate a lot of problems. Just so you are aware, we are experiencing an uptick in uh, vandalism in our parts. Um, so we're hoping that we'll drill, uh, deal with that issue as well. Um, in particular, our restrooms, um, we're getting a lot of vandalism in our restrooms. Um, we are also noticing that people are complaining that the restrooms are being closed early. It's not being closed by staff. Someone out there is opening and closing restrooms without authority. So we are taking steps to monitor that and make sure that uh, we are, people are adhering to this uh, scheduled park hour. So we are aware of the issue. And so if people are telling me, hey, why are the restrooms closed or why, why are they open to after you know, regular hours? We don't know exactly what's going on. So we are taking the appropriate steps to figure out what that looks like. So, again, we're hoping that park patrols will help us with that. Um, how often are the users invoiced? Um, user invoices are going to apply for the field commitment, usually by season, and are set up at a plan at that time. The total is due by the end of the permit day, the payments scheduled throughout the period. Payment plans are available for everyone. So, if folks are having trouble, please work with us, Angelique and, and Marlon, the arrangement for timing, the accommodating people. Um, for games, invoicing usually happen at the end of the month, it's game schedule that can people make. Payment for plans require a lot of, of staff time um, and are maintained in our active software. And again, it is another issue of the payment plans. We want to be as accommodating as possible, but please even know that we have to work it. The more time we spend the payment plans, can be less time we have to support you in the uh, Next question Is there a policy regarding outside organization use of fields? Um, the policies are such that we have a fee structure that requires that not outside commercial groups. Um, pay more, they pay market rate, and then there's general subsidy of some of the And as I mentioned, the issue of prioritization of field use has been an issue that's been raised with us. And so we do want to do recognize that there's some long standing practices that we want to reevaluate and see if there's a way um, that we can accommodate new groups as well as maintain the integrity of those groups who are here and have been long valued um, partners here in Santa Clara. So um, that will be hopefully um, our discussion of our next meeting. Is there a break in a field usage between residents and non-residents? Again, um, we do not categorize that in our field structure, so we don't have a breakout. But when we thought about it, and what the commission we could provide to you, and what we could provide to you is the contributions to the Wake Bromel, because those are groups that are paying into a scholarship program for non-resident -part non participants. 
And so um, you'll see the different years there in 20, fiscal year 21, we had 11 years pay in and the collected 30,575 in fiscal year 22, I'm sorry, it should have been 22, 22, 23, there were 16 groups and we collected it about 31,000. So for a total of 62,500. So we are averaging around $30,000 every year for waiver of all, and that'll be important to keep in mind as we talk about the next section. So any questions on this first section? Just to understand that, so the, uh, your paying groups are actually, pay, their fees are actually going to wait for all the fees. No, no. So they're not, they're not the fees. If you're paying for non-resident, those fees go into the wait all, all of them, not partial. All of the non-resident fees go into the wait yeah. Um Your permit fees go into the departments. First, thank you all for this and all you addressed. Um, if I haven't applied to use the park, but if drafted, use the park for what it's designed for, or is there any is there any restriction or agreement that that's what it will happen? For example, let's say at Marsali, there's a football game, a cricket game, but it's on the Marsali softball field. Can can someone use it for what they want if they rent the field? So there is a list of uh, uh, approved sports that is on the application. So it's your traditional sports. If somebody comes to us wanting to do, like we had somebody um, want to do, you know, triathlon activities, including um, like archery or something like that. We talked to the parks department to get approval and to see if that's something that we could safely do in that park in that space. Yeah, where I was going with it is if it's like obvious, okay. They probably don't have a permit, maybe even for the enforcement or reporting it in. If that was like an obvious trigger, it's not an obvious trigger, then. Yeah, so I think that is an absolute, right? And so we do try to accommodate. If we've got space available, if we do it, we're going to try and see if we can put it out. But as, as Angelique says, it does have to address both safety and our you know, the purpose that it was originally intended. Yeah, I see quickly that Marcelo regularly and then on a school side, I can see it like, three on baseball fields there and stuff like that. You're good. talking more like non permitted, like yeah. people who are just showing that. Right, yeah. you don't know. Yeah. Angelique, we're talking about cricket, right? It sounds like you're yeah. not permitted. <laughs> it's, they just show up. I, I believe I was told by Parks that cricket is actually not allowed on softball fields, but it's never enforced. Yeah, it's yeah. by a city board, it's apparent. That's what I was told. So it's not. For our enforcement body, if they know that, yeah. that'll help them in the conversation. So, right. Yeah. yeah, that's a great comment. And, and we should work with them on the parks patrol. We actually have meetings scheduled with them and us in the library and them because the library is in park facilities to talk about the, how the park patrols will work. So, the worst example for cricket was we shut down the Rio soccer field because the rain the field was soaked. We pulled our soccer teams off of protective fields. I drove back an hour later, they were playing cricket under. And they run the same track over and over again. It's probably the worst sport you could do on one track to just wear it down. So we shut it down because we want to save the field, which meant it opened up to the cricket. So, yeah, we definitely don't want to damage our facilities at all. So we'll, we'll work on that. Um, for those of you who are online, can you hear the people in the room? If you can just put a notation in the chat. So I want to make sure that people are responding to your questions that you can hear from us. We do have somebody who's monitoring that. So if you can't hear, just please put it in the chat. Okay. So uh, the next area of uh, questions related to the use of fees, how the use of fees collected in prior years when we should deals. Uh, so again, prior to 2022, 23, no fees were collected for the use of the sports fields. Um, currently, uh, we do have limited fee revenues um, that are used to maintain the, the fields. Um, including but not limited to lawn maintenance, utilities, and lights, monitoring, video, drivers, putting out the pest control. So, when you ask about where does your field, where do your fees go, it goes into the department rec budget and we use the budget for those types of purposes. Uh, most importantly, the fees also are used to support the on site staffing. So, Angelique and Marlon and the folks who are here at each of the facilities, as well as the folks who are behind the scenes, we do the registration, the marketing, all of that. So, that's where your fees go, they're $14 goes to making sure that we have a sufficient staff to monitor the sites and process registration. Um, 
We are, again, um, as we know, that the existing 14 hour fee is in the 1% to 20% cost recovery tier level. So we are already, as a city, subsidizing the agent costs associated with operating and maintaining the field. That's why for us, um, it's really important that we do have a fee so that we can maintain staffing here, that we can maintain the quality of, of our field experience that you all expect. Right? We just heard about cricket and not having damage there without staff to be able to maintain those fields or to regulate the uh, registration. We can't provide a quality experience. And that's why the importance of the cost recovery policy. Um, in addition, fees for non resident participants are appropriate to the Bay Scholarship Program to afford the user groups the opportunity to provide scholarships for low income participants and seek, as well as seek reimbursement for other eligible program costs. Uh, we will talk a little bit later uh, about how the normal scholarship program works because we have been um, advised that there are some issues around the administration. It's part difficult. And hopefully, what we present today will make it easier, but also that there are some groups who truly serve Santa Clara residents. I don't see anybody from the Lions here today, but um, they're a group who we know serve, provide valuable services to Santa Clara residents but aren't eligible for the state level. And so I want to have a discussion about is that something that we need to revisit? Um, if the field rental fees for youth groups and nonprofits were eliminated, what would be the potential service impacts? Um, again, we, based on our, on our experience, we about 8,200 hours in the year at 14 hour when we use for rental fees, we generate about 115,000, 114,000. Um, again, while it appears to be minimal, eliminating it for one user group, so only eliminating it for sports groups and maintaining fees for other groups that use our pools, that use our gymnasium, do everything else seems to us to create an equity issue. And so if you're going to have, if you're going to eliminate fees for one group, we need to evaluate the impact, not just of those fees, but how it affects the department overall. And again, without those fees, we won't have staff. We won't be able to provide the quality experience um, that you guys expect. Where does the money for the youth and seniors in the 49er agreement go? How is it used? Um, so the answer to that is the funds from the youth and senior programs in the Levi Stadium agreement are allocated to the budget of Fox Rec. We've got, again, it goes into our general fund budget, um, and that's how we pay for all of our staffing and our program related expenses. So it's one source of revenue for our department. Where do the fees from new development go, and where is it used? Uh, these are commonly referred to as park and fees. Those are appropriated to the park impact fee fund, which the Department of Parks and Rec also um, manages. And those are used to require um, park land to build new parks, to rehabilitate new parks, the buildings, those kinds of things. And so what I've provided you here is city code chapter 17.35 that outlines um, how park and fees are collected and the primary uses. And again, it will talk about acquisition, park and location. So that that information is there. I do want to point out that none of that money can be used for me. And that's not based by city law, that's by state. Um, so none of those funds can be used for maintenance for non capital for the public health expenses. Okay, so I'm going to skip the waiver on the section real quick and I'll come back to it. And then I'm going to go to the relationship with outside organizations, which is question 12. It said, How can the community benefit from better joint use parts of the agreements? So this is an area where we have some lots of questions that we need to be better about. But I think we are on the right track and we're moving in the direction. So we've actually been pursuing mutually beneficial joint use agreements and partnerships to improve service to the community. And the key recognition, the key word here is mutually beneficial. It means to benefit not only the group, but also the city. So I want to give you a recent example of what we think is a mutually beneficial agreement. And that is a license agreement we entered into with AFC, the Dilly Twan Women's Professional Soccer Team, founded by four female Santa Clara University alums and former Olympians. Um, their, their use um, will generate approximately $44,000 in revenue in exchange for 48 hours of use and 144 hours of use of the community room at the use of park during times that are not reserved for youth development. In addition to paying the commercial rate fees, money that we would never have to pay for, we feel that that money is really going to make. AFC will be donated approximately twenty-five thousand dollars in equipment. They will be providing players and coaches for three clinics for youth ages ten to fourteen to introduce them to the sport soccer. They will be facilitating five player appearances in the community, and will be providing discounted tickets for four home games. The first player appearance will place, take place at the Central Park Library, July seventeenth at three p.m. We encourage everybody to tell them to come out. 
um, return of story time in Central Park. Um, in addition to the story time, they have seen like the book drive and a recent game, talked about where the thousand books that we do on the way to our They align up with their things that they're seeing that leadership is about. But leadership, I know one of the concerns uh, has been you know, how are you going to maintain a sports field to fuel you and that may maintain that a priority. So the license agreement very clearly articulates that the, the priority for the youth soccer park is to demand new sports. And all of them, they need to complete a one hour prior to a scheduled youth program. In addition, the agreement requires that commercial rights be paid and that the benefits be provided to allow them use. So in no instance would we be agreeing to it without some kind of community benefit. We believe these types of collaborations that leverage and utilize recreational assets during times of wealth that are not utilized by youth sports and generating new sources of revenue and community benefits will enable the city of Santa Clara to not only enhance the experience for youth soccer, youth sports participants, sorry, uh, but the broader Santa Clara as well. So that's an example of what we're trying to do, is trying to make sure we get enough community benefits to warrant letting people into our facilities and generating new benefits. Mike, yeah. Good question. The, the $48 is juice. Is that spread over five days, six days? It's not like two days, right? It's okay. like two hours a day for 10 weeks or whatever. Thank you for that It's, it's uh, two hours a day, uh, 20 days between now and now. Okay. So, that's minimal. Right. That's minimal. Right. And you can have any convenience, anybody, but it generates a significant amount of money and a significant community benefit. No, it's, it's a good partnership. I don't see that as on grass, these practices. So, um, yes, so they are professional soccer teams. So they are using, they'll be alternating between field one and field three. Um, but again, it's two hours once a week. For, and it's not every week, it's 20 days between now and November. Oh. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go back. Any other questions on those questions that were asked? Uh, uh, follow up because we got this so late last night. I would like, yeah, hopefully, I'm speaking for others as well, some time to maybe send in some additional questions that this may spur with your answers. So we can respond in two to, two to four weeks, let's say, to something we may come up with. Yeah, this, this yes. Yeah. Is this cloud here? But we're not here to tell us how it is. Right. We're here to share with you the response that we've got to continue the conversation. You're going to see today um, some thoughts for you to try to get us. And so we could be very easily gone from our trainings and saying these are our focus and change the way normal. We're not going to hear to you because we have some issues of some questions we have. We might have to take you before we make those changes and then we'll go over the program and be able to say we had this discussion. We may not agree on everything. Just to be full, cool, but okay. everybody will have the chance to provide their comments and we will record those comments when we go forward. Fair enough. This question about your phone timeline to get to the city council. So, you say you want to do the park and activate them soon. What is that? Three months from now? Probably time. So, ideally, I'd like to be at Park and Red in September. September. Okay. In when? In September. Okay. So, I'm sorry, we're two months. months. Two yes, months. two months. Um, because we do the issue of key and outstanding fees, right? Yep. We want to make sure that we get the issue resolved. Um, as you'll hear in a little bit, um, we're hoping that we do not touch your recommendation would be not to touch Wade Brummel for permit fees um, because we strongly believe that the purpose of that fund was to help young people um, be able to participate and to afford it rather than paying for DC. But again, we'll take your feedback and one listen to your concerns on how it can be. And so you'll have a chance to see if the the park goes to the city council with it. Let's get yeah. it. Yeah. 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 And so, hold on, I'm going to um, this gentleman in the back. Can I ask him? I'll go back to you. And just a, a follow on related to the use of a grass field at YSD, regardless of its approval. My our understanding was that. The grass fields can accommodate up to 50 games in a seasonal year. So my question is, if we are opening this up, how is the maintenance 
schedule be altered or adjusted to accommodate additional use. So they are paying for that additional maintenance. So in addition to the use fees, they are paying for the additional maintenance. So I'm, there's an owner and a renter mentality. I think that in the room, we have an owner mentality. Other people may have a renter mentality. So if somebody would use our grass fields for practice, which is our heaviest wear and tear on certain areas, any coach will tell you, a game play is totally different than practice. Is if we can regulate where they move on the field because they're going to kill those fields. And unless they're willing to replace the turf. But then it takes a couple of months to settle and everything else. It's just a, it's a, it's a high maintenance baby, but and we've done a great job since I think they went in. It was 2008 or what year did they go in? It was 10. Uh, it's not big fields. They yeah. were in like 2010 or 10 or 12. 10 or 12. 10 or 12. Yeah, 10 or 12. But they're that nice because we really have baby them. And I've had professional players who up to coach their teams and tell me, I've never played on a field this nice. So to us, to open the door to them, that's fantastic. But there has to be some guidelines how they use our building, our, pro our property. And I, I say, our, oh, it's not mine. I'm just a renter too, but I have a more of an owner mentality on those grass fields. And we have the same mentality, which is why we would not allow them to do consecutive days. We did not allow them to do consecutive days. I appreciate that. We did not require that they have high maintenance, that the maintenance that they pay for the maintenance. Um, you know, it's, it, we've been very clear to them that this has been a long standing priority for the youth community and is our prized possession. And so, any use that they get is at, at the grace of it. They've been very clear. So, it's very clearly written in the agreement to that extent. And they, as well, they want to be good community partners. So, it's in their interest. Um, they, for those of you who aren't familiar with AFC, um, the four women who founded it were Santa Clara alums. They're former Olympians. Um, they are very vested in literacy and leadership program and exposing this work to the young community. So you'll see, did we get confirmation on the clinic? No. Um, we have a clinic coming up uh, later this month um, where we will put up the flyer. And so they're going to make their players available here for kids 10 to 14 to introduce them to the sport um, for free. And they're bringing their, that's part of their agreement, right? And we're going to get three of those and then five. Uh, player appearances. So, and in having those role models out in the community for our young athletes, teaching them the importance of not only to play the sport, but being good, uh, good community folks, and be and the discipline that goes into sports. It's a huge community value, community benefit um, for our community and for our regular community. I was just going to say, in addition, in the agreement, it was um, written or that this is a trial period. So it will be evaluated at the end of this first term, per se, as to what worked, what didn't work. You know, this was great. We had a lot of community benefit. People liked it and that we want to move up forward or not. Um, I don't see that not happening, but um, it was very clear from both sides that this okay. was a trial basis. Those will be on turf fields, right? Grass. Grass. It's the grass field. Yeah. So, Angeline, for, for you, I appreciate that. And you know, we've worked together for many years. There's a couple of people in this room who actually sued the NFL to protect those fields. Okay. And so we have blood on those fields. I mean, literally, when I signed that agreement, I still haven't recovered from it. I'm, I'm a homeowner suing the NFL to protect that field. Okay. So I'm really invested in making sure that it's long term and not just because they think it's so beautiful and they want to come play here. That's fantastic. But treat it like it's their own home and rotate and move and don't beat up certain parts of the field. That's all I have. That's our as well. Right. And so, um, you know, it, it is interesting because um, when we get to talk about field use, I do want to talk about the ISP and then consider the hatch out out there about a month ago where folks came and turned the water off. And without, without our knowledge, or I don't believe it's with our knowledge. Um, and so, got to find out what happened, right? So I've asked him to talk to staff to, to investigate because we cannot have people going in there and it is with the water on the grass and so that I just can't. So please know that that field goes along with those we understand the value of those fields and the importance of our community we will take appropriate action. Right. That's all I just make sure that you understand we really are passionate about just like you guys are. I know we're very passionate about those fields too. Excellent. So, any, I'm oh, sorry. When you're going to wait, Rumble? 
I'm going to move to break uh, one, one point before that, uh, well, two, the first. There is a lot of work that clearly went into all of this. Um, so thank you again. But my comment is really related to the, the thought that there's greater fiscal accountability when there's somebody imposed. Don't necessarily disagree, but I can only speak as a website board member. We, I'm going to bring it back to our board because we do a far better job of how we audit it, our field use. As an anecdotal example, let's say we book Wilson One on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then the team that gets that has games every Thursday in the next 12 weeks, and they're not going to be there. We can report that back once we establish our game schedule. I, I, I wanted to commit as a partnership to you that we would take the steps to make sure we're doing that instead of just letting it be a void, because that's the responsibility we have based on how we move forward. And I just wanted to commit at least with that conversation you're going to have with us. We're going to do our own audit to make sure that those fields aren't empty. And on behalf of everybody else who's in this room, thank you, because that's exactly what that kind of collaboration and communication is what's going to allow us to use the, every person to have some time on the fields and not just go there. Nothing is worse to drive by a field that you know you have 10 requests for and nobody's on the field, right? That, that's a problem. There's got too many users who people want to use the fields, and we need to make sure that we can do a good job to make a fair and process or on the flip side we prepped it for something that we think that's going to happen and then we drive by and see the game isn't happening so we appreciate you notifying us and letting us know so we can let parks know you don't have to prep that field today they can put their resources somewhere else for the day we appreciate that so uh, right before that line the, the line of to eliminate fees for one user group and not others creates an equity issue um being that the last council meeting in June, we know for a fact that there are groups that are singled out and are getting preferential treatment, whether it be youth groups, adult groups. I look at the lawn bowling center that just got, you know, their, their request to the clubhouse and like that. It's a loaded statement to tell the youth groups that we can't support you that way because that creates an equity issue, but we know for a fact that it is happening elsewhere. And it actually sets up some legal you can't use that as a justification for something, but then go around and vote right when this is when things get voted to support specific groups for a million dollars as opposed to the hundred thousand dollars that all of them are taking. Um, and the other thing in in line with that, and this is really maybe not related to one of these questions, but uh, I would really be interested to know what the city statistics are in relation to AB twenty four hundred four. Uh, which requires gender equality in city city parks and rec facilities based on the ratio of young women and men, boys, right, uh, in the city. And I, I, what I see personally is as the you know I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna assume this case. Don't be there to correct me. Um, with Santa Clara Pasco being the only recreational and youth sports league just dedicated to girls in this city, we pay fourteen dollars an hour. For our fields. Soccer, which is the vast majority of both teams, right? I mean, there are some both teams, but if I look at the ratios, I see I do scheduling for some people I know are paying $20 for this team or for the youth soccer park. The, the gorgeous facility that we just talked about at the youth soccer park, $14 an hour. Central Park gets $14 an hour for what I pay when the, the, the fields are not kept for the same standards. And respect where I last still to this day on the dirt there, I'm getting, we're paying for another amount. So there is an equity, even if you charge the same amount, there's an inherent equity issue when you're talking about dedicated facilities and shared use facilities. Um, and safety issues, right? So as staff, our job is to present what we feel is mm -hmm. the, co the pros and cons of any position. So the city council makes that makes the mm -hmm. decisions on what's fun and what's not fun. So that just so you know, we do our best to provide um, an analysis that's over both sides of things. So when we talk about an equity issue on eliminating the one versus the other, that's what we're trying to do. But just find that council know, you know, just keep this in the back of the line as you hear the decisions that you're making. The the issue around um, creating the fields. I think we talked a little bit uh, previously about other cities do have sort of premium field fees. We don't have that here, right? I think right now everything is a $14 fee. 
It's something we can look at in the future. Maybe next year when we look at it and talk about things, we can do it. Um, the issue around equity and cross groups. You know, I would encourage everyone who's at this call and on online to participate in the parks master plan process, right? Express your concerns about those kinds of issues so that it can be documented and, and expressed to the to the city council. We will do our best to identify the issues that we occur, but then they speak to the council better than hearing from their constituents. So if those are concerns, I would encourage you to express those and participate in those forums. Um, you know, I think our job here is really to try and then figure out how do we make this community be as cohesive as possible and be responsive to the needs and, and really think things through. And so to Bert's um, point about being passionate about our facilities, this is our house. We do feel it's our house. I can tell you the Parks and Rec guys work really hard. They do. And, <laughs> those fields. Um, and, and while the softball fields that may not have had as much attention as the soccer fields. That's something to bring up. And when we have an annual budget public hearing, I can tell you, I have a from folks at those public hearings saying, hey, invest in our public, in our, in our softball fields. That's the, the forum where you need to express that because that's the purpose of those meetings is to hear from the community, get the community, the council, the opportunity to listen to you and say, we think we need to be invested here, right? And so I would encourage you we can't do this down. I mean, we'll do our best to do it. But if, that, if that's the issue for you all, you should be going to the city council and saying, these are where we think you should invest your dollars. Not to the detriment of soccer, because right? I think people want that. But also an equity issue about we also want some investment here. We've heard a lot of discussion around a bond, potential bond measure in November. That's another area for you to go and say, you know, what about what are you doing to push folks to in general? That soccer, softball, we have an interest in pickleball. <laughs> so, but again, there's there's this normal process we do. So, if there's any not any questions, I do want to get away from all this. I'm not sure how much time we have left. Which time do we have? About uh, 50 minutes. 50 minutes. Any more questions on these? Going back to the equity issue, I had a question about how this is guided. What sports organizations can use what fields for games versus practices? Like just speaking for website, we only use one field from you guys. And we're never allowed to use it for practices. So why are other organizations you're talking about AFC, right? Oh, they're paying. Well, you want us to pay and we're willing to pay, but we're not allowed to use our fields for practices at all. And we're not talking about like repetitive motions. It's more for like scrimmages, honestly. We need the dirt field for that. And we're not allowed to do that. So why are some groups able to use fields for practices, but not others? So each individual site is a level of maintenance and level of strength, right? So just full transparency, right now we have a any of our games and games. So our grounds crew is as fabulous a job as they do, they can't do everything. So uh, and they are on routes, and so they can only get to certain Fields on because they don't meet, right? So if your priority is games, which is the priority for most folks, they're going to go to that, to that part right in time for the game. And so it doesn't allow them time to go back to practices to make sure the field is okay after your practice before the game. So I don't know the particular issues of what we're slightly looking at, but that's generally some of the issues that we're, we're challenged with. Just in contrast to uh, what you all pay versus Bay of C. So they're paying, I think it's 280 meters. $280 an hour versus the $14. So the extra cost of the pay, so it's, it is a significant yes. So I'm saying it's just an outrage. Yeah, we can't, obviously, we can't compete with these organizations, but we're just going to sit, like you're talking about how frustrating it is to drive by these empty fields. It's really frustrating when we have coaches literally breaking their ankles and potholes at some of these awful fields. And then we have these beautiful fields we're not allowed to rent, and we're willing to negotiate, like, oh, we'll use it twice a week or whatever it is. We want to maintain them. Also, we want to preserve them for games. But when it's our off season, like this time of year, we're having a hard time understanding why can't we utilize our fields some of them? Again, I can't speak to your perspective. We only use 
so I do know Carmichael is not a so I'm not going to get too crazy. So Unfortunately, Carmichael is the only baseball field that the city has, and so it impacts your ability to use it regularly for both games and practices. It's a question that yeah, our, 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 have it's our off season, right? It's not our season right now. We just have a couple of teams who want to use it once or twice a week for some basically scrimmages. And the so challenge will be that if you're not having fields that are in good condition for your games. Maybe we can look at it. Okay, so maybe we can talk about mine and figure yeah, out what's going on. We're trying to, but we have to look at it. But again, it is a matter of, I think, just in the grounds making work of position, we've got nine things. So, so part of that is Carmichael looked beautiful for a reason. And it is maintained as much as possible. Right now, we have a remote team of one for the whole city. That includes all of the parks and all of the facilities that needs mowing. And it's really difficult when the request comes in. We try to make like as you said, we try to make it as nice as possible. But if there's tall grass or anything like that, even for scrimmages, it might be a little bit difficult. We don't want that, that ball popping up because there's a certain section that might be a little bit higher. It needs somebody in the aisle. We want to make sure it's safe for proper use. And that's why, as of right now, you mentioned um, it is only for games. So, I just wanted to address a quick one of the elephants in the room, and that was that came up the last time was uh, why can't the teams do it themselves? Right? Like, what is there, is there work that we can do? Um, it is a union issue. We are a union agency, and we'd have to talk to our employee groups. We are willing to have discussions with our employee groups. We have to have discussions with them first to figure out what they, what they would allow outside groups to do. Um, and if there are opportunities, we are willing to look at that. Um, but that would have to mean that whatever, whatever group that we allow, we have to enter into an MOU and you'd be responsible for that um, for uh, all the agreements into the MOU. So just know, I do know that's an issue and it's come up a question and we're not opposed to it. Um, but there's a process for us to go through. We have to meet and with our employee groups. Um, and then we have to identify what, about what would be allowable. And then we can come to you to talk about these are the kind of things that you're interested in. We talked about that at the last meeting, too. So is there a timeline to have that conversation with them? Because, yeah, like Alan Rock Little League, for example, they've entered in the MOUs, same thing, you know? Is there a timeline? You know, a year, a quarter, right now, the event probably Completely not just we are actually so happy with the projects. We just finished the fourth of July. Yesterday we just had rest of those. We just have we just do not have staffing right now to take on a real process. So um, I can't give you a definitive timeline. I can't give you what happened maybe before this next four I meeting with you guys. So yeah, no, I, I hear you, but this is where again the equity issue comes into play. If you want to take our money, but then you're not able to provide us what we need, this is what, why I think all of our groups are frustrated. And I think it's like not to say anything bad about all the staff that are working because they do an incredible job and we, we love all of them so much, but it's hard to say, oh yeah, I have to raise your dues to all these families and our facilities look exactly the same. Like how do we explain to them, I'm so sorry, it's gonna be 200 more dollars per kid this season. And they're like, for what? They don't, they're not, we're not able to show them anything. And they're frustrated with us. And obviously on the our cash side. So again, I forgot who was coming to say about the public council. So the Tuesday night, the council took action on the mission, right? So they talked to them. We participated. So there you go. So you know, we've got to have specific projects and categories. So if this is a category, so the Tuesday night is coming Tuesday night, it's another opportunity for you to go to the bureau. The problem is they accept the amount are um, so you can go back and say, oh, it's a 400 million, let's make it 800 million. So no, and, and you're right. Yeah. They are looking for it, but you, you, really but you can identify that as projects move forward. This is going to be a category for part of the community. That is, you know, we don't know what this yeah. is. You can say, for that category, we'd really like you to consider baseball softball games. That's totally doable. Right? So maybe that is it within you guys, not with us. <laughs> but, but that's the opportunity for you to do that. That in the budget process. Okay, so we have less than four minutes. Um, so I want to really switch to play for a moment because there's a lot of issues and I think some really great stuff for you guys to look at. 
um, before I switch to the other screen, I might go back to the other because I have to read the cards real quick. The first one, how can access to these stars and stream that are utilized? We're going to use today to, to talk about it. Um, but we've also identified a number of policy issues that we want to talk about with you guys about. And this includes to the focus of the way grammar program gives scholarships, grants, for both. What percentage of the annual allocation should be earmarked for scholarships and how much for grants? And again, keeping in mind, we get about $30,000 a year. Um, should there be a minimum and maximum allowable grant for individual scholarships and grants? So, um, should we sit, because there's a lot of administrative language, you say you can't ask for less than $100, but you can't ask for more than $500 because that limits the number of scholarships that you can give. Um, and this is a big, this next one is a big one. Should only those groups who pay into wait from HUBBUN be eligible to receive a grant? Um, and here's the one where, again, I just want to go back to the Lions as an example. Everybody knows Lions does a great job of providing programs for you, but they are not eligible to receive play drama that they don't pay into it because all of their kids are sacked by residents. So they don't get grants. Um, and so they so choose not to pay into it. They're no longer using a city field, they're using a that's all school. Okay, I got you. I see. Um, but we've already given out money to people who don't pay it. Correct. So, but that, there's nothing in the policy. Right? Or, uh, policy. Uh, <laughs> that's the issue, right? So, we need to be clear on are we going to allow the funds to go to school fields? Are we going to allow the people to go to only so Santa Clara residents? That's what we want to have this discussion. But let me finish the other questions. Um, the other one is the field use, whether you want to have field use. And, and our recommendation is to not use the field use fees um, to be waived normal, and instead recommend that we use the money we get from BFC um, and other adult use to offset the use fees. We think we're going to generate enough money to be able to do that and not impact it. So, for example, we already got the $44,000 from the BFC. But, um, oops, something happened. Um, this is What happened? I think I made a lot of people on the city. No, I'm not seeing it. Well, it should drop out of the city in the beginning. The people are still there. Can they see my screen? No. They can hear you. There's a box on here, but they can't see you or hear you. Or see you stream anymore. Okay. Um, do you want to log back in? I do want to share your screen. Sorry. Sorry. Reconnect to your internet. It's like in the bottom corner, like right corner. Yeah. I we do about that. Yes. Not fun. So obviously, we need to invest in our right player. I knew this can be fifteen dollars. <laughs> So, um, for those of you who are online, do we hear me? Yeah, you see that? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so for those of you online, I'm going to move a little bit closer. Um, and then the other things I want to talk about um, is about Wade Rummel is um, we are recommend or we want to get feedback on whether we should have a single annual grant application process or should it stay by season. And then um, part of that is um, the other associated issue with that is part of the delay in administration is that we often get grant applications that don't have the right su uh, supporting documentation. So there's a lot of going back and forth. We actually had three grants that we have gone back for with almost a year. 
And so that takes up staff time. Um, it's a lot of frustration on everybody's part. As you're gonna see in a minute, we have some tools that we think will alleviate that, <laughs> that problem. Um, but from our perspective, we wanna recommend that any grant application that is um, does not receive, the re where we do not receive the appropriate documentation be automatically disqualified after 45 days. That way we've given 45 days to work with you. If you can't get it to us in 45 days, we're moving on and giving money to somebody else. So that's gonna be our recommendation. Um, so um, at this point, I do wanna go back to the way Grummel's. Now I'm gonna ask um, if, for your indulgence. And I have two staff people who are going to show you um, two tools and then we'll come back to the policy. Okay. Um, the first one um, is going to be the scholarship program. So the scholarship program right now, the money goes to you all. You guys decide who gets the money. Um, one of the challenges we see with that is that we think we can reach a broader audience to all residents in Santa Clara. And so that if we administer the scholarship portion of it and we give you guys, give the participants a voucher, they can go to you. That way you don't have to worry about the money. You don't have to track it. We will do all of that. Um, it, it, we also think it's probably um, much easier on families of coming to us to, to get the money rather than having to go to or all friends. Like a digital credit card? Like a digital credit card, right? So we're, we're working out the mechanics for a voucher, um, but that's that's what we would like to go to. Um, and so um, uh, we're gonna show you um, the application. And we sent you the link so that you could do it on the phone. So if you wanted to see how, it, if you wanna follow along on your phone, families could actually apply for the scholarship on the phone. Uh, and then bring in, schedule an appointment uh, with city staff. So I'm gonna turn it over to Terry, who's gonna talk a little bit about what that form is. Before we start, can I ask just a quick final question relative to what you just said? So I totally get that process. It works for me and my family. We found in our league that many Santa Clara residents that are in a place of need aren't as technologically savvy as I am and don't use PayPal or Venmo and our paycheck to paycheck. Um, some have issues. I don't want to get into politics here, but some have document issues. So how do you handle something like that? Because those are folks that we categorize as in severe need. So we deal with those, those folks in our, in our classroom programs as well, right? So in all of our classes. So the staff is well-trained on how to deal with those issues. We're going to go through what's, what would be required. Okay. Right? Um, but again, we're very sensitive to that. And that's actually part of the reason why we think it's um, less intrusive for the families if they come to the city because they're already coming to us for, set, for classes anyway, um, or programs. And it's it doesn't they're not predetermined of which group that they have to go to. Um, they can use the voucher for whatever program. Like it's, okay. it's okay. She just, the staff has done a great job. So this is Terry um, Velasco. She's going to present. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. And Tammy is here with me, Tammy Rolando. We collaborated on ensuring that we have the end user. We know that this, you know, there are varied users, and we have electronic versions and paper versions. Electronics with the link through your computer and also through QR code for those who might be, you know, tech savvy more, more than others who would prefer the paper uh, version. So Tammy will walk us through the flow chart on the process. Okay, so, and, and like she was saying, if you're worried about people who are not gonna to wanna to go online and do this application online, the same people who, uh, do our verification process. They can go to the, they, they can show up in person in the CRC and we'll enter this information in forum, right? We'll get them into the electronic system if, if that's if that's the, the hold up. But the way the electronic system would, would work is that there will be an application online. Okay, you'll go to the form, the family will fill it out. And it'll ask them things, it'll it'll tell them basically everything they're gonna need for when they come in and get verified by us. So immediately after they fill out the form online, it's gonna notify our staff that we've received an application and they're gonna get a confirmation email telling them when their appointment time is, when they agreed that they wanted to come in and do their verification. And it's gonna 
it's going to indicate to them which documents they said they were going to use for their for their resident verification. Okay. So they're going to get an email confirming it, and we're going to get an email. The applicant then comes to the CRC, to the Community Rec Center. They show their verification documents. We check them off as being qualified for the program. And then the approval process starts. If they get approved, an email gets sent, will get sent to the applicant. Or if they don't want to use emails, we'll probably call them. Um, and the groups, you will get an email telling you that this person has been qualified for a scholarship in this amount for the vouchers, right? So you'll know ahead of time. Um, also, all of that approval is going to be, the scholarships are all dependent upon funds, right? If for some reason we wipe out the amount that we've said we can do for this season or this year, we will have, we will have, a, if we can't approve their, their application, then they'll get an email letting them know that for this season, we don't have, we have no funds available. So the whole thing should happen very quickly. Instead of them having to wait, you know, a, a month to find out, they should be able to have, and it'll only be a few days. They'll find out, you guys will get notified that you are now, that you now have a scholarship recipient so that you'll know you'll be getting a voucher. Um, I'm not quite sure how the voucher will then get turned around and, and turned in, but that's something more that we'll, we'll work on a little bit later. But basically it's meant to be very simple. The application is very simple and it's meant to work quickly um, so that we can get them in and process it and get a price notification that you now have to publish the recipient and give it a I just, you guys all have the PowerPoint in your package, so you all of you have it. So if you can't see on the screen, you've got that. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? got the card or like the, they just for them. If you have your smartphone and you try to turn on into your camera and hover over the QR code, I guess it was a restaurant, right? Yeah. So, Now, end users, those applying for scholarships, will have two options if they want to use the electronic version. They can use the link and also, or the keyword code. So this is the visual for the computer version. So if they click the link, this is, this is what they will see. This is the front page form. And then if they click start now, this is what they're going to see. And you also have a handout if you want to see all the items. There is the scholarship program application test version. There was a handout when you walked in the door. And then so end users will be able to fill out the form. So this is the computer version. Now for those, uh, when you submit, when they submit after the form, this is what will show up. It's going to say, thank you for submitting a Wade Bravo scholarship application. A staff member will reach out to you regarding your application within 14 days. Business days. And then... If you click the QR code, this is what you'll see, the mobile version. It's for on your phone, are you this is your seat? Yeah. Right. Same look and feel as the computer, same everything's the same, except that they can apply through their phone. And same after submitting the application, same message. Now Tammy mentioned that after they click submit, they will receive an email. The applicant, the parent will receive an email on the email that they provided, and they will say, You have chosen three appointments. And then it also indicates what type of documents they would have to provide to ensure eligibility. And then staff will receive an email simultaneously that saying that a transaction has entered, as somebody has applied. 
And then for those who would want paper version, because for some, for whatever reason, they don't have access to a computer, they don't have a smartphone. If they come to the uh, community recreation center, staff members will be able to print them out the form and then they can fill it out right there and then, or if they wanna come back when it's filled out, then a staff member will be happy to enter the application for them. Similar process, they'll, you know, um, they will, there will be acknowledgement email. So Tech, Gary, let me just mention a comment that was made to me. So one of the benefits of this, we do have bilingual staff. So anybody who has language limitations, they can come to the community center. Uh, and um, one of the things is we have, we did some change our, our staff do the, the forms for us. Um, they can easily translate this into Spanish. So we can make that available for you to be used for Spanish. So I do think that a lot of the use of key language means and technology, despite the fact that we can't use the technology in this room, there is a benefit to be able to use technology and making it easier for our work. Yeah. So you want to go yeah, that will be the scholarship side. <laughs> yeah, the scholarship part of it. The yeah. um, so our proposal is that we separate the scholarship program from the university program. So that it's like a sports year to you. So that if they fail to come to us for the scholarship, then you guys can submit the grant application. And I think if you've got a form that you're going to like, it should be just check the box and it should make it a long one. So I'm going to go ahead and present that one. Okay. Um, so like she was saying, we wanted to separate out the, the uh, and I get all the technology stuff, that's why I get to do all this. Um, we wanted to separate out the grant application from the, from the scholarship application, right? Because they're really two completely different things. We wanted to make it as easy for you guys, we wanted it to, to just be one form. Done. You submit a packet and that should be it. So... You know, it's hard, to, it's hard to read up on the screen, but the first thing it tells you is basically the organization's eligibility and the grant requirements. There are three things. You have to be a city of Santa Clara based nonprofit sports organization serving resident youth 18 years and under, must be current in its payment of non-resident youth participant fees. And then the third, this is something that I think as a group we had, Cynthia had wanted to discuss is that Minimum grant amounts are X and maximum grant amounts are Y. Um, grant applications are accepted either depending upon what the group kind of talks about once a year. Do we want to do it once a year or, or once a season? Um, and that there would be a, a, a time frame to submit. And that it's a reminder that reimbursements are dependent upon the fund availability and they're subject to our to approval. Um, the instructions, basically, you'll just go straight across the line. The date of your receipt, the vendor it was for, what the item was. Once you attach your receipt, check the attached receipt box. You'll pull down an expense category and you'll choose one. You can put in notes if you choose other because it's something that's not listed and, and you think it's, a, it's something that should be reimbursable. Uh, you put in the amount. That's it. At the, end of the, at the end of the day, once you put all of those things in, it will total it all up. You will basically attach all your receipts as, you can scan them as PDFs. We don't need hard copies. You don't need your original receipts. Scan them, take a picture with your phone, if that works. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how it gets to us. It, a digital format is fine. You'll attach all of that into an email and send it off to the to be created an email address specifically for anything that has to do with Wade Brummel. And it's PR for Parks and Recs, PR Wade Brummel at santaclaraca.gov. You'll email that packet in, and at that point, we'll start our approval process, and we're, we're in the process of then streamlining that approval process. Uh, the, our, our behind the scenes approval process, we're gonna try and streamline that and get these things out and approved as quickly as possible. So what I was trying to show was um, that the box with the little check of what's eligible expenses already listed. So it'll say uniforms, equipment, tournament mm -hmm. uh, fees, whatever. So you're just dropping box, checking out the box so that there's, it should make it really easy. Like them, hate them, love them, whatever. One of my best friends was part of the, the foundation building of the Wade Rumble uh, Fund. His name is Tino Silva. And his goal, his 
ultimate goal was no child in Santa Clara would ever be denied playing. He'd be on the field playing. And I was all for that. Before I was removed as a Parks and Rec Commissioner, for no reason, by the way, I was actually voting on certain things where money would go. And there were some things that were presented to me that had nothing to do. I had Wilcox High School asking for $1,200 for baseballs for the high school baseball program. I voted no. Okay, that's a, a public school. They have no fun. As mom and dads, don't ask me. Granted, we have 300000 in the account at the time. There's a lot of money, okay? And we're trying to get the money out. I get it. But there's lots of places the money should go to, and some places it shouldn't go to. Okay, and schools, no. I want to I want to make sure we get back to the way from what was formed and try to keep it that way. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But that's what Tino really wanted. So I'm his voice right now. So, so look at that. It's one of our questions because you feel the same way about what the business is going to get to kids. But the way the program is structured right now, both are eligible. And so there's there's um, money aside for, for grants and money to for scholarships. Right now, there's no distinction about that. percentage of those goes to each. So we want to talk about that and understand what's the consensus of this group. Should, in our opinion, I really like to see it go to scholarships, right? Um, okay. And not have any money go to grants, but that's going to affect you. So, we wanted to have a discussion around what's the right way to get percentage distribution. Uh, and are you willing to say, you know, they think it should go to the most scholarship? I was voting for Lions program to get money. They they asked some uniforms, travel fees, and turn. I voted yes, yes, yes. I know Lions serves the youth. Uh, the Wilcox High School was some team that wanted to play a tournament at Washington High at Washington. Uh, field and they wanted baseballs paid for. Wilcox never put one dollar in the program. And I'm sure if we ask Lions to be part of the program, they'd be willing to participate. But for the meantime, let's get them uniform and playing and on the field. So that's a good question when we get back. But do you have a question on the quick foundation? I I call it I haven't gone with the Sikaski news recently, but uh, what is the approximate balance? In the fund as of the end of the year, and what and, and how much goes in in a particular year, and how much goes out? So, the average over the last few years has been thirty thousand dollars in. The we were not getting uh, any well, we we're not getting sufficient grants to cover that thirty thousand dollars, so the money just rolled over. Them. Yes. So, there was about one hundred and twenty nine thousand in the fund, so that's about the money we have to distribute. Now, that being said. I'll give you an example of one of the things where I raised a good question. One of the grants that I just signed out on that was approved by the Parks and Rec Commission was for a group that they're going to get reimbursements um, for equipment and scholarships, but it's $30,000. $30,000, $30, which means that if we approved that grant, they would keep the entire money in the test, which is why I, one of the questions we want to talk about is should there be a maximum for the number of grants? That means we would have a grant. Um, again, these are decisions that we want to hear from you because okay. it's going to affect you guys. We don't want to be want to say, you know, we can't get it, but, but that's the reality is that one group will get the entire pot of money if we don't change or address this issue. And we don't think that's. Didn't you urge that group to submit all those receipts? Then? We did because there was a one time, the one time allocation. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No. Maybe might be taking that last time. We did, but we made a concerted effort to try to get to one big money out. Um, but on an ongoing basis, as we move to get the fund, so we want to have some guidance that says the maximum amount of grant for a for supplies and equipment for maybe five thousand or ten thousand, whatever it might be. But understanding that. If the entire purpose or the intention for original purpose was to be scholarship, should it be 50% of the annual allocation to scholarship? Should it be 70%? Should it be 80%? Should it be 90%? What percentage is the view of you? And I agree with you that if there are groups like the finance who will need money for uniforms, who will need money for children fees or whatever, yeah. Yeah, that's an eligible step. I also want to make sure that we also understand that this isn't the only part of my seeing as available. For those of you who have not taken advantage of it, there is a community grant program, right, that we can apply for those monies as well. So, um, you know, so there's ways to leverage. But again, this is what we want to have a conversation about first, right? So, what's the consensus of the group of how this funds should be used 
should there be eligibility limits uh, and we should deal with who speaks the eligible expense. So those are the three questions. So this is funded by those non-resident fees, correct? Yes. Solely, that's solely. And it's meant to come from to you who are using city fields only, or could it be school district also? So we don't have any control on school district fields. I yes. guess we would be able to collect from them. So it's only our fields. Let's say, for example, like our T-ballers only play on school district fields, but if we had 10 of them who are non-residents, they're paying into this fund, correct? Yes. But they're not playing on city fields. That's no. not. We're in your base oh. That is how we've collected yes. up until this point, yes. But that's a question. Yeah, is that right? right? So they, they, that, that's yeah. you want, yeah. they, want they can't utilize this fund. Exactly. But they have to pay into it. Right. Yeah. So it's that paired for them. Even though they're on school fields. They're on school fields. They don't play on school fields. They, they, they wouldn't be able to utilize so it. They would be able to utilize it still because they'd still be able to apply for scholarships even though they're not playing there because the league is contributing. Yes. Then the any not player, even, oh, not they're not but well, even if they, even if they were playing anywhere, yeah. So I'm saying they would, they're paying something that they can collect from even if they needed to. Right. So, couple of couple of points. Um, not a big favor. I'm going to tell you straight up, right out of the gun. I'm not a big favor of the city taking this over. Because let's say you reject somebody, okay? For whatever reason, they didn't cross a T or dot an I. Then they're coming to, uh, to the user groups, the end users. I'll use power to do that. We'll say, well, I got my grant denied, but I want my kid to still play. So, 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 so a scholarship or on a scholarship. On a scholarship. So we have, in our bylaws, we have, Statements that say, you know, kid will be turned away. So now we have to let this kid play for free, and the city has turned down their scholarship. So what's your plan to cover that? <laughs> Secondly, this is a lot of information that I don't feel comfortable answering all these questions to right now at the spur of the moment, considering we got this data at 9 o'clock. And I understand, I, I get where you're coming from. <laughs> Um, you so guys have no, you guys have been buried. I, I, I get it. Please know I to be the end discussion of this issue, right? We're presenting it to the, and you see on the, on the presentation, it said it was a test. We are testing. You want to get your feedback. So you've got okay. to so so, lots of opportunities to provide it. So, so there, there's a, a handful of us that are have a formed an alliance in the city. Nonprofit youth groups. Um, and I would like to ask for at least a three week turnaround time for some of your questions on this. That falls within your time limit to get it to Parks and Rec within two months. Okay. Um, yeah, you guys have, have, <laughs> have been stretched way too thin, in my opinion, but I'm just one individual. Uh, I'm not the head of the beast, as they say, but I want time to meet with these groups that where we're talking as a group and have been for the last couple of months. To we want to have as much time. We are not doing something that this group is not support, right? So, yeah. well, so that's the thing. There may be something we can support, but um, but our intent is we need to hear from you, and our intent would be that whatever areas that you may disagree on, that we communicate them, because that is our job. We need to do the analysis. We need to present what the pros and That's the most important. Two of us. I think yeah, that, I think that, to, to quote a famous song, there ain't no good guys, there ain't no bad guys. It's just you and me. And we just think <laughs> differently. Not, we us. Okay. Us. Us. okay. So, I mean. I think the big question, I at least on our end, and I'm sure you're thinking too, is going back to Bert's point of what was the intention of the waiver of fund? Exactly. Do we want to go just all scholarship? And then there is no money set aside or reimbursing for 
uniform, equipment, whatever those other things are that come through. And then the intention solely be scholarship for the kids. And then there isn't that no, or potentially no, you know. Well, I think that the only reason you would set me would, the only reason that, that the child would be turned down is because there's no money, right? right? And we're not going to say, you know, we don't so think you deserve it, but we think Joey deserves it. But let's be honest, yeah. the seven or eight years the way Brum has been around, it's always had an abundance of money. Because I was in the Parks and Rec Commission when it got first approved, okay? And ever since it was first approved, there's always been an abundance of money to the point where we met with Kim. She threw out, by direction of Jim, I think, the, the fund was so big. They said, Give, we're opening up for grants. That's where we got the $12,000 from, was that special one-time grant application. So my today, okay. so... We have families that have four or five kids, right? Do we want to say it's so much for family, or so much for you? Is it $100? Is it $500? Is it for season? Is it for year? Those are all things that we can shape and just. We have our rules in power. And if it's for an entire family, we give it to them. We, What's that? Mean? Does that mean that you have two kids and you want a scholarship for both of them? Both of them get it if, if you meet the criteria. But there's a dollar, right? And so it's your score might be $200, uh, baseball might be $300, soccer might be $500. Right. So what's that? So there's an equity across the scholarships. So how much money should each individual style or each of the family get? The so, so what I'm hearing you say, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, let's say I charge $165 for a soccer player. Santa Clara Youth Soccer charges 200 feet. One child in each group, doesn't matter if they're family members or not, asks for a grant. You give 165 to PAL. The only amount that Santa Clara Youth Soccer can get is 165 because that's what we all agreed upon. So we're going to set so we're gonna give the amounts to every group. Every child, but we also be saying, "Can you borrow to support the child?" And so we're asking you, what would be an appropriate average grant to get the scholarship to give to a student? But that's 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 so hard to define be because it may not be just like getting a hundred per person. Exactly, and, and that's what we're asking, mm -hmm. right? What, what's going to work for most of us, right? Uh, because okay, so that, if we do it the other way. Some kids may get a lot of money and other kids may not get anything and they won't be able to get to play and the money's gonna be gone. Right? So we're trying to get out of these ways to distress the money across across the groups. And my bishop says many kids are possible out playing. And keeping in mind that over the average year, we're only bringing in about 30,000. Yes, we do kind of still have that overflow of money, but. I'm the one that's seen all the checks. I'm keeping the records. We're averaging about $30,000. Right. Yeah. So if you know, the possibility, you, our registration fee is $165 for soccer. The fee gives them $100. They come to us, we give them $65. So now they're playing for free, which, which is the intent. That's, that's a good thing. Kids are playing. Is there a process through the grant process, let's say, that I can say I gave out $65 in a, in a scholarship fee? Can I get that refunded through the grant process? So we have not discussed that, but that's what we've discussed. If you want to allocate it so that the, the organizations can also apply for scholarships, let's talk about it, right? As opposed to getting equipment. Because right. Right. it's all scholarships, it's all going to play, get, get kids to pay. We don't have a health side, right? We're just trying to figure out how do we get kids the most money to make it as easy as possible. We do think coming this way, having bicycle staff, having it automated, having stuff available is, is the easiest way rather than groups doing it. But it may not come up with the fees for everybody, depending on what you guys want to set as the average or the, the limits for the vouchers. That will depend on which sport the kid goes to and where the gap is and, and all of that. So that's the thing that you want to hear from. I just what do you think you need to value that? I was just thinking a good saving that would have a like a 
a barrel at a minimum. If the fund drops below the number, no more grants are granted, just scholarships. So you have a certain number, you guys can figure it out. That if we drop below that, there's now a red flag, you can't grant anything. So, what we do with the reverse to get the Scholarships given out and grants are available. Well, yeah, whatever, take care of the players. But I know like this twenty, thirty thousand dollar grant is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, how much money have they paid in over the history of the late Rebel Fund? I'm guessing zero. Okay, so these people are not applying, are not adding, but taking. And it works for them. But again, that there is a money. Right. Yeah, would you just might get out? Well, so, you know, talking about that. That, way to get out. that window may be shut down. Let's just focus back on the youth of Santa Clara. And, and so again, when I hear you've got about 10 minutes, what I'm hearing is you want to focus on scholarship. That if there's funding available, it would be work on grants, and the grants would be primarily scholarships. That's what I'm hearing. Agree. So, that means Lions would not be applying for uniforms. Well, sadly, football also has the greatest cost of equipment. I mean, yes. it's between pads, everything else. I mean, your soccer teams and nothing, softball, nothing. So uh, you want to say 80% for going to scholarships and 20% for our equipment grants? That's not going to happen. Same as the right. We'll figure it out. Yeah, I think it's something that I need This is what we all need yeah. to collect that we need to talk about. Yeah, yeah. So that we can present something to them that we're all comfortable with. <laughs> <laughs> and and the other thing we get with often is what if what if the Santa Clara kiddo to Tina Tina's intent the program wants to play something other than soccer softball baseball like taekwondo or yeah. gymnastics yeah same thing same Tennessee, thing I don't know <laughs> you know rugby I agree but what. You know, you'd like feedback on that. It, it changed. It changed my life as a kid playing youth sports. So I'm gonna say it made a huge difference to me. So, so what the nature of time? What I've heard is you guys need like some time to review this chart. You say figures. Well, we can be in your reviews. Just get the input. What I would like to do is send you specific questions so okay. that we can get that feedback on it uh, and make sure that we get a response back. Uh, I I would. Urge everybody to think outside of your own group, right? Uh, so that we're considering the community as a whole um, and figuring out how to be left out of the process because there's going to be some unintended consequences. So if we did it all scholarships, why not the equipment? Those Quick question. Uh, if we do the scholarship application and in the grant application, which is more work with students and groups? If you guys would kind of set them up both to be equally easy. Equally yeah. easy. <laughs> right now, which one's more typical for you guys? Groups. Like, terrific. The individual scholarships. Do you guys do think the grant one is. You think grants one because it's more paper. There's the uh, qualifying the receipts, making sure the receipts are actual receipts and not quotes. There's a lot of back and forth on that on okay. that end. And, so and this process will okay expedite. I have a quick question that you're probably going to have to answer. So we take in thirty thousand dollars average. What do we pay out on the average every year? So prior to Jim's direction of everybody give us money, it was probably less than eight thousand. Less. Than so we were taking in thirty, paying out eighty. So we had a net profit of twenty-two thousand dollars. Why our 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 balance? Balance. That's why we're balanced. I'm just quoted. I'm sorry, Kim. Was going up and up and up, and we were only paying out five thousand one year and nine thousand one. Right. Right. So I mean. We're going to sit and talk about this. So that's good information to know, right? And you have to show that cost. Yeah, the rates were going to be paid for. Grant, you see some balls at all. You see things reimbursed. Grant means they're giving you the money. That's cool. Five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. Then be sold by a different group. It's ridiculous. That should be twenty-five hundred dollars. That's the number that we have. So um, that's what I suggested at a park direct meeting. And I had one clarifying comment too that when you, when you ask if the groups here would prefer that the waiver fund be used for scholarships, right? That there's an important caveat there because the referral from city council during that meeting was not just waiver, it was, it was in relation of waiver and field use. Groups. So it needs to be very important that it's stated and understood by everybody that if we are saying 
that we prefer that the Wade Rummel grant money be the Wade Rummel fund money be used for scholarships and grants, college and first and grants. That is not this group agreeing that we agree with the use fees as a program. No, and that's right, and that's a very important thing to amount to. Well, we've got to be because that's what they asked us about. The, so the, that, the referral itself was directly related to the on field use fees for this meeting. Yeah, we have right. and we have a So we collectively have created a letter, so we'd like to give to you. And it's addressed to you, and it's about the field usage fees. We have a copy of that. We have a copy of this. Yeah, you can post it. I don't care. Um, that'll be sent to probably all the city council and the city manager electronically. Yeah, we'll post it for everything. Yes, yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, so for today's purpose, you've got all the materials and you send it out on the front page. I'll post it so people who can get it who are prepared to get it. Um, that's a shame as well. Um, again, um, what I did want to show is that it started dropping it after it right out. So the tools, I hope the tool will make the process much easier. Uh -huh. For us, it's much easier to read. You don't have to get every time. And hopefully, I think I'm glad I can consensus that 45 days is enough for people to comply with the getting uh, into the competition. So it's the yeah. Application. So that would be, be one of the things we talk about collectively, the 45 days. So, yes, that being said, if you said, say that you wanted to send out a specific list of questions, can we have those by next week? Yes. Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Friday, uh, Friday, 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 Friday. Well, see, I'm gone next week too, so I'm with you. By Friday, no, I'm not. Uh, yes. By Friday, okay. Thank you. Um, so again, our goal would be to try and count to partner recognition in September, um, which means that we have to have the uh, draft memo done probably like the last, well, maybe the first week of September. We have our online list, so no one has to put it in, so we'll try to figure it out. Uh, but that's our goal, right? To get it there in, in September, um, which means that that's the time project to review and talk about it and speak that out. But I really encourage folks to take this opportunity to not to think about how we've all done it, right. but how we want it to be done. So, thanks for coming. Thanks, thanks for setting us up. I'm appreciate it. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. And since we didn't talk about the fees today, we need to talk about that before it's done. So, Yes and no, because the fees are a separate issue. But you, when I heard you say day, you don't want to fees included for the That answers that one question. The question about what do we do about fees is a separate issue, which are correct, so I have to go to council. We are not going to council on that issue until later because we have to do the analysis of all of the fees. So that will be a separate issue. The referral so during that city council meeting, it's on record. Yeah. It was stated that this meeting yeah. was to discuss. Field Wait, no, 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 go back and watch. Okay. That was not it was <laughs> because I went, I personally went up and I told Raj, Mr. Jamal, I said, no one actually has invited us to meet again. We were all sitting there confused when we were talking about the fees. You said there was a meeting in July, and we're like, look at each other, what meeting? To talk about Weaver Miami, and I apologize. I was understood my mission to get the the intent is to go back to council when we have the fee analysis for all of the sports fees. Um, and it was not just these sports fees, right? So we have, if you go back to Mr. Phil, the question became because that's why they did the reconsideration, remember? They did the So they did the reconsideration because they did not understand that the impact was going to be all of the sports fees. So they did it on a parallel substantive plan. No, no. Yeah, yeah, the motion was rescinded because Wade Rommel was brought up. And then it was directed to the CIC to use of Wade Rommel for field fees at the last meeting we were discussing. That's why this meeting was delayed. Otherwise, the vote would have passed for rescind fees permanently if Wade Rommel had not been brought up as option. For the five. Uh, the, 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 so we're, we're having some the things here where. Sports props. Yeah, I mean, we have to. And a true partnership works. With trust 
and the knowledge that people are not going to manipulate, not manipulate, but I'm not, I mean, not using the right word, but not follow what was actually stated. And that is what we say it's on public record. This is not the purpose. This is not what that, that meeting was said it to. I'm just speaking full transparent. That's not what anybody here expected this meeting. I, I have council members tell me to call them after this meeting and say, what well, got discussed about the case. They walked up to us during the And so, so just so we can go back, what the way from a discussion on fees was should it be permitted to feel these fees being included as an eligible expense of the way from a That's the discussion. What I heard today is the answer is no. It's not a definitive answer because we have yeah. we're gonna go meet and discuss all this in the group. But just to be clear, you all talked that you wanted it to be scholarship for grants. I mean the reimbursement grants. Mm -hmm. When I asked about the field division, would it be an eligible expense? You all said that. Mm -hmm. But you're separating the two yeah. legislations. It was yes. well, that, that, that why, and that is exactly why on the recorded meeting I brought up the fact because there's been too much of this. Ask a question with guiding the answer to something that makes sense for one narrative. That it, it, the direction was way from field fees. If we could not come up with, it, you can't say that we're saying that we don't want it to be used for field fees, and then all of a sudden the field fees. Well, they said they didn't want it for field fees. Now we're going to charge them to still the field fees. No, that is not. That is not but it, it should have been involved in the same discussion because they go hand in hand. Because if you go to a meeting in September and, and vote on, hey, we can't use these, the, the break from grant for field fees, and then they say, well, there's no money anywhere. So you guys have to keep the fees because so you guys said you don't need it at a subsequent meeting. We've now shot ourselves in the foot because we we thought it was a combined discussion, which it was asked to be. Um, and now if we do this in this linear fashion, one has already been decided. Well, sorry, that's not that shit for sale. We can't use that, but now we need to get this money, so we're going to do it. It's one discussion. Yeah. We will not be going to council on that other issue or on this issue in, without having a discussion about these. That I can, I can have to give you a bit now. But if we go back, the purpose of today is to run out whether you want to fill these space to be an eligible expense. And what I'm hearing is this. Well, we don't have a definitive answer right now, my opinion. <laughs> It's fine. I've already said, please go back to the country and have a discussion. They haven't had to do that. But just to be clear, what I heard today was the, the, the census of the group that said, we wanted to give us a chance to play. That's what I heard. So if you guys want to go back and have a big number of chances, that's fine. Just say it's that. And that we will. Great. That's all for us. Okay, so the uh, other item on the agenda was to talk about the next meeting. So uh, my suggestion is that we meet in September, right before we go to Department of Recognition, um, and have that meeting so everybody sees what the power will be, everybody has a chance to provide input before it goes to commission. Um, so we'll look for a date in September relative to the Department of Recognition meeting. Um, so that you have one more last chance to make sure that we've incorporated whatever feedback you've given to us, if that's as fair as we can be. Um, and that during that meeting, we will not only talk about the way of Rumble, but also to make a discussion about the other organizations. That really is something that we will talk about um, how the public can do this, how it's supposed to be. So, that would be the meeting. Is there anything else that you want to add to that? When are the uh, people dealing with drive lives to monitor the fields? Uh, I call them private users. When does that start out? Is that the partner shows? Yes. I think we should do the podcast on July 1. Okay. Um, and police is um, trying to get people to fill the slots in and then figure out the route. So um, I kind of believe them. Um, They've actually already started sitting down. They started as I walk around Central Park every day at lunch. And at least two or three times a week now, I see a patrol vehicle going around. My name is Central Park. I can't speak for the other parks. I'm mainly part. But I see the patrol vehicle there. And I have a question on the so why so do you know because I have first hand experience in the last month? Um, well, can you pay for the fields for a softball tournament? Um, I had just three drug and prepared, prepared a field, put the barricades back up, and there is a slow pitch softball league uh, that plays every Sunday night at Central Park. They just completely ignored it and started going to play on the field. And when I went up to you guys, you guys just walked, walked right by it, guys started yelling at me. 
Um, and, and it, it, ironically, a church thing. Uh, but, um, and they're the ones that every time it rains and fields are closed, are there every Sunday night? They have around, I have pictures, there are around 80 people there every Sunday night. So but that's not part of the control. So how is that ever going to get? So what I'm asking is, is apply to my side for right now. And then we can make up the other one that I'm going to do. The question was, why are we on the So I'm over the other part of the show. Why are we staff are not talking about the sober scheduling? So. Sometimes I gotta take off some of the way to buy. Thanks, Dimitri. So how do you want just sorry about 